Good afternoon everyone and um, thank you for joining us for our Barefoot Computing Showcase webinar and um, today I'm joined by Neil uh, Ruckus and Wendy McLeod who are both Barefoot Ambassadors um, and I'm also joined by my colleague Susan Say and um, my name is Jenny Mackay we are both Digital Skills Development Officers for Education Scotland. For anyone new to computational thinking, as you'll be aware, it's within the curriculum for technologies from early level right through. It's a way to solve problems and it's a, a tool that our young people and ourselves can use to tackle a problem that can be quite complex to understand what is required and break it down and to uh, get the best possible solution. In teaching our young people about computational thinking processes, we're allowing them and supporting them in developing skills to develop, identify patterns, objects and information. We're also allowing them to gain strategies which will be useful across the curriculum. Um, and these strategies can link really neatly with other areas such as um, creating lists, um, creating an algorithm in computing science and much, much more. Wendy and Neil will talk at length at these um, in the upcoming slides that they'll show you. Hello and welcome to the Barefoot Computing webinar. We are delighted that you have joined us and over the next 30 minutes you will discover how Barefoot Computing equips teachers with the confidence, knowledge, skills and resources to teach computer science in primary schools. Our session begins with a recap of the computational thinking concepts and approaches that are at the heart of each Barefoot activity. You will also have the opportunity to see a couple of Barefoot activities in action, and we will conclude by taking you on a website tour. My name is Wendy McLeod and I work for the BCS Chartered Institute for IT. I am part of the Computing at School team and I am one of the community outreach managers. I manage CAS communities of practice across London and the east of England. Before joining CAS, I was an experienced primary teacher and computing practitioner for excellence. Co-hosting the webinar today is Neil Rickus. Neil currently works in a variety of roles. He is a senior lecturer in computing education at the University of Hertfordshire, a primary education specialist for the BCS and is an independent consultant. Barefoot is a collaboration between BT and Computing at School, which empowers primary school teachers across the UK to brilliantly deliver the computing curriculum with face, free face-to-face -face workshops, helpful online guides and engaging lessons. It is developed by teachers and backed by research. It helps boost teachers' subject knowledge, saves them time and brings computing to life in the classroom. In addition to this, no expensive equipment is required. Barefoot is on the side of teachers, helping them inspire pupils to think, learn and thrive in a digital world. It also forms part of the BT Skills for Tomorrow, aiming to give 10 million people the digital skills they need. Barefoot has been well received in Scottish schools and over 630 computational thinking workshops have been delivered so far. In addition to this, over 8,800 teachers have registered with Barefoot, meaning around 78% of schools in Scotland have already been reached. Barefoot is mapped to Scotland's Curriculum for Excellence along with the experience and outcomes, which means it can be used to support the aspects of computer science within the curriculum's technologies framework. Barefoot also links with other curriculum areas, 
And where cross-curricular links are made, these are detailed on each activity. One of the main areas the effort looks to develop is people's understanding of computational thinking. Now, computational thinking is a toolkit of thinking skills that we can use when we're tackling a problem, often but not always with a computer. The graphic you see on the screen is the computational thinking poster from Barefoot. You'll see on the left hand side of the poster, there's six separate concepts and there's five approaches to working on the right hand side, which we'll discuss in a moment. Now to become really good problem solvers, children need to develop and practice these areas just as a tennis player practices their serve or an artist practices new brush techniques, for example. Now, this is really important as these problem solving skills are at the heart of what helps to make a good computer scientist. So whenever Barefoot goes into schools to work with teachers, they leave copies of this poster to go on classroom walls and in computer rooms. What's really interesting, though, is that computational thinking isn't just limited to computer science. If children can develop these problem solving skills, they will be better problem solvers in math when they're trying to identify the rules for number sequences or when they're trying to spot patterns in scientific data or when they're summarizing and decomposing stories and perhaps uh, getting the plot together in the English storyboards, for example. So there's a vast range of subjects we can use computational thinking for, which makes it really, really valuable. So now we're going to spend a bit of time looking at the six concepts, which you can see summarized on the slide here. And on the next slide, we also have the five approaches as well, which uh, we'll go through too. So if we can move on two more slides. Yeah, one more after that, that'd be great. Thank you. So I'm briefly gonna go through what each of these concepts means in practice and we'll discuss in the next section how these relate to some of the barefoot content when we're looking at pupil activities. Now you may remember one of the computer science statements within the technologies framework relates to computational thinking. So an awareness of each area is really going to help teach lessons involving these concepts to children. So we're going to go through each concept uh, one by one along with describing it in a bit more detail. So we start with algorithms and these are uh, exact sequence of instructions or set of rules for performing a task and that might be a, a recipe for example or how to uh, perform a dance routine. Now with younger children this may well be a sequence of instructions but as children get older their uh, algorithms might uh, take different routes depending on an input for example. So we have decomposition which is breaking a problem or system down into different parts. And this is really useful when we're looking at more complex tasks and particularly for mathematics, for those lovely two or three step word problems, which our children love to hate, for example. We have abstraction. We are identifying what's important and what we can perhaps leave out. And this helps us determine how specific we should be when given instructions. So if we were having an algorithm to program a jam sandwich robot, how far might you move their arm, for example. And one of the classic examples of abstraction is the London tube map, which uh, takes away a lot of the stuff you perhaps don't need to know. Now for other three concepts, we have patterns. And by noticing patterns in our algorithms or the data, we can make predictions about what's going to happen, uh, create rules, and also solve, solve problems. This can also help us make our algorithms more efficient, such as through repeating sets of instructions. When we're evaluating, we're making judgments based on a range of factors, such as something, such as what you need to do, what you're trying to achieve. And this is really nice if pupils can give feedback to each other as well. In addition to this, we often need pupils to get used to failure and determine how their work can be improved, which is often uh, lacking in some of our classrooms at the moment. For evaluation, if we're creating a database, it might also help us decide what information we want to store. And then finally, we have logic, and this helps us establish and check facts 
and also help with making predictions and good old logic puzzles such as Sudoku are really good for enabling people to practice this too. Now, if we go on to look at the various approaches, these can be thought of as ways of working and the activities within BEFA allow children to develop these throughout their lessons. Uh, they're summarised on the screen. I'll go through uh, each one briefly. And we start with tinkering, where children are changing things to see what happens. That might be perhaps they alter the value of a variable in a program. It might be they change the order of instructions. And then they're going on to do some creating. So they're designing and making things that might be something that's of interest to them as well, which is then likely to perhaps lead to better outcomes as well. Debugging, finding and fixing errors, make sure our algorithms and subsequently our programs are working as are expected. And then we're persevering, we're keeping going, making sure we can actually get to the end of the work. And for all of this, Barefoot materials provide lots of opportunities for pupils to collaborate, to work with each other. Now, a lot of these can be described as life skills as well. So they're not only applicable in other subjects, but also in children's future work and their education. We're now going to move on to look at some of the lessons within Barefoot. And I'm initially going to look at the data dash sequence of lessons. So these lessons allow pupils to answer questions about countries' performance in a multi-sport competition, uh, such as the Olympics, for example, by selecting and using different data attributes and values. Pupils then, how to, pupils then plan how to answer the question of how, uh, sorry, uh, are we as fast as a professional athlete by identifying the data that they'll need to collect. It's Really nice to link it to sports day, perhaps local athletics events as well, or perhaps it could be undertaken at home by pupils as well, which I'll, I'll show you in a couple of minutes time. So for each lesson, there's really detailed lesson plans, which include links to the computing curriculum, along with the computational thinking concepts and approaches that I just went through. We also have really comprehensive slide decks and we've got some screenshots from them here. And these are carefully linked to the relevant section of the lesson plan. And as the sequence of lessons initially focuses on an international sporting competition, we start with attempting to answer some questions related to the data, such as how many bronze medals did France win? And we're also given on the next slide a vast amount of data to actually work with as well. So this allows us to look at how much better computers are identifying uh, the answer to some of these questions. So for example, uh, for the question, which country won the most bronze medals, even as an adult, that would probably take you a few seconds to work out, whereas a computer could do it much quicker than that. The lessons also spend time focusing on key vocabulary, such as data attributes, which is the property or feature of something. And also for this lesson, we have data values, which is the value collected for the data attribute. Now, this use of the correct vocabulary ensures pupils are using the correct language throughout and also ensures they're not simply saying we're doing spreadsheets today, for example. Another nice feature of a lesson plans is the model teacher talk, which ensures the correct vocabulary is again used and the key points are included during your explanations. So really good for non-specialist teachers or perhaps those that maybe aren't that confident in some of the underlying content. We then go on to think about the question we want to find the answers to, which is, are we as fast as a pro professional athlete? along with uh, data we actually need to collect. Throughout the sequence of lessons, pupils are also encouraged to examine the process of obtaining the answer to their question, which could include altering the data attributes or collecting more data, 
and this cyclical process uh, continues until uh, we're happy with what we've got. So once we've decided on our data attributes or the data we need to collect, we need to go and obtain it. As I mentioned earlier, this data could be obtained at home. And you can see my daughter decided to time all of us running up the garden, which was great fun. Luckily, her three-year-old brother was more than happy to do this. Alternatively, the information could be obtained from other members of the class, uh, sharing it through something like Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, or even through online research. We'll then go on to record so we then going to create a spreadsheet to record our data and an example completed spreadsheet with some data in there is also uh, provided with the schemes of work and this helps you check the various formulas and that the calculations are working correctly and again this is really useful for uh, non-specialists who might want that extra check to make sure that they're along the right lines We then go on to attempt to answer our question using our data. And in order to help with this, there's also worksheets that can be used if needed, or pupils might present their information in a more creative way about, such as through producing an infographic or a presentation. So hopefully you see it's a really nice unit of work and the collaboration aspect could be taken even further, perhaps by using a shared spreadsheet for the data, which might also help pupils' digital literacy skills, or maybe even comparing your results with those from a different class or a different school. The other concepts and approaches covered are data, which um, hopefully is clear from all the data that's been collected, abstraction, where children have got to decide what information is important to collect and patterns where pupils look for similarities and repetition in the data. So now I'm going to pass back to Wendy who's going to start looking at some of our home learning resources. Thanks Neil. Um, so Going Wild is a fantastic home learning activity which is quick and easy to set up and offers a lot of opportunities for children to be creative. If children have used BeeBots at school, they will see the connection with this activity very quickly. The activity encourages the child to create a sequence of instructions to program the bee to move. Children will love making their own bee. This could be out of household materials or Lego, or a child could use their favorite toy to move around the grid. The activity can be set up indoors using masking tape to form a grid, or as you can see from these photos, outside using chalk. My daughter and I had a great time doing this activity outside, and the activity comes with printed direction cards, which allow the child to lay them out and then follow their sequence as they move the bee. This activity introduces a child to algorithms and programming as they sequence their instructions for performing the task. There is also the opportunity for the child to debug their algorithm if it's not quite working in the way that they expect. It's worth noting that this home learning activity links back to a resource in the teaching resources section called Barefoot Goes Wild. So there's a great link between learning that is happening at home and at school. I'm now going to go through various sections of the Barefoot website to show you what's available and how you can find resources linked to different areas of the curriculum. This is the home page. To access the teaching resources, you will need to register using the blue button on the top right hand side of the screen. All the home learning resources, which are located in the at home section of the website, don't require a login and are accessible by all. Registration is free and as already mentioned, 
all the resources are also free. In the resources section of the website, there are over 50 resources available for teachers to use. The search bar on the left enables you to select a number of criteria, including your country, which ensures the resources are linked to the different areas of your curriculum. You can also filter by level, curriculum link, activity type, computational thinking concepts and approaches, and length of time. One of the options within the search box that's particularly useful is the option to find resources designed specifically for SEND children. On the screen, you can see some of the resources available, including our SEND guidance. When you click on a resource, a more detailed description comes up, including the objectives, assessment opportunities, timings and equipment required. What's really useful is that the page highlights the prior learning required in the step back activity, which can be undertaken beforehand or alternatively used with younger children. It's also worth highlighting some of the other guidance available for teachers on the site, which includes curriculum links and details of resources you've previously downloaded. This is a really useful tool as it means they can be found quickly again. For example, if your photocopier mangles a sheet. The My Resources section allows you to browse all the resources available whilst the My Learning page, which is shown on the next slide, provides further explanations of the various computational thinking concepts and approaches within the curriculum, along with how to introduce the Scratch programming environment to children. It is worth mentioning here the NCCE, the National Centre for Computing Education, which has lots of free resources available to all and excellent online courses. More information can be found at the teachcomputing.org website. We mentioned at the start of the webinar that Barefoot offers free workshops. Although we're currently unable to run these in schools, a number of sessions are being offered online, particularly through computing at school communities. In order to find an online event taking place in the near future, please visit the Computing at School website and search under community events. You can always request a workshop on the Barefoot website or contact Barefoot directly on inquiries at barefootcomputing.org. Earlier in the webinar, I showed you an example of the home learning activities within Barefoot, which can all be found by clicking on the at home button at the top of the home page. These are likely to also be useful as homework or extension activities once children return to the classroom. I'll briefly go through each of the three sections in turn. The learning together activities are a set of fun and creative activities created by teachers to help parents guide their child through the fundamental part of the computing curriculum without the need for screen time. They include everything needed to get started with activity sheets and accompanying materials. Mini missions provides lots of opportunities to develop computational thinking concepts. For example, to develop children's understanding of algorithms, there are fun tasks linked to cooking and finding toys. 
And finally, we have the interactive learning games. These are fantastic online games for children to explore. These fun activities are barefoot inspired and apply computational thinking concepts to promote learning while playing. Okay, so thanks for coming to this webinar. And with regards to your next steps, please do register at barefootcomputing.org and have a look at some of the resources to use in your teaching, download some and try them out. You can book a workshop by going to the website and click on workshop at the top of the homepage and complete the request form and the team will be in touch. Finally, if you can promote the at home pages to your parents and carers, such as by putting a link on your school website or the learning platform, that would be great. So do get in touch. The details are on the screen now and we'd love to hear from you. Thanks to Neil and Wendy. Um, so just a few things before we finish. Um, I'd like to highlight the technologies community um, within GLOW. If you're not familiar with it, there is a tile you can add from the app library. Um, as you see here, when you um, join that site, there's lots of promoted uh, links here that can take you to places such as Barefoot, as we've seen there. Please use your Google login to register. We would suggest you use that. And that has all the resources that Neil and Wendy have described. There's also links out to Computing at School Scotland, which has a vast array of resources that you may also find useful. Plan C um, and the SQA, as well as lots of different links available, including our um, What Would Learning Look Like resources that you may find of interest. Um, in addition to our uh, technologies community, there's a wealth of free open source resources available online that support computational thinking, such as Barefoot, as well as computing science resources. Code Club that we've also done a webinar on recently, Hour of Code, um, Scratch, Microbit and many more. If at any point you'd like any information, please don't hesitate to put a pit comment in the team um, or get in touch with one of the digital skills team at Education Scotland. We're all really happy to help. Additionally, there's a wealth of other resources um, available on our DigiLearn Scott community on our blog. Um, so you can go there to find out about upcoming webinars. Anything else that is um, available that may be of interest, we'll also signpost there. And we've got a fantastic area about sharing practice. And we want to hear about how you might be using these barefoot resources or any other resource that you find um, is promoting digital skills within your classroom, within your school, within your cluster, or indeed your own use of them. Um, we want to hear from practitioners, we want to hear about your use for your own personal professional development as well as with your young people. But there's a wealth of resources and it's well worth a look. It's also um, a good shortcut into getting into our YouTube channel where this session um, will be recorded and added to, um, as well as any other webinars that we've offered. Um, you can view them there. That just leaves me to thank um, Wendy and Neil. Um, and also, to if you'd like to contact them directly, that's their Twitter feeds that are available. So Neil is Computing Champs and Wendy is Wendy McLeod 3. Additionally, um, you can contact Barefoot and follow along. They've got lots of offers and promotions that are usually available of um, upcoming themes that they might be using. So their Twitter feed's always worth a good, um, a good look. Um, and if you are sharing any digital practice or you ha would like to let us know about anything, computational thinking or otherwise, please hashtag DigiLearnScott or use the at DigiLearnScott Twitter feed. We'd love to hear from you. Okay, thank you all.